Today is the big day. We are going from home to Island Park with the Cybertruck towing this trailer. This trailer is about 5,500 pounds, roughly. Maybe we'll find some scales to run over uh, on the way. Then we'll see what we actually got, but it's definitely 5,000 pounds plus. So it's a pretty heavy trailer. And so here is our beautiful Cybertruck so far. Everything has been great. Um, we had that little towing experience uh, that I did the other day. Just a short stretch, but it, it worked wonderful. So we're expecting this to be basically a great trip. The only problem is from here to Butte, Montana, it's about 150 miles and there are no chargers. <laughs> The truck is still plugged in and charging. I'm trying to squeeze the last 2% in to make it to 100%, but I probably won't be making it. It's already relatively late. It's past one in the afternoon. We got 300 miles to go to Island Park. So that takes at least six hours anyway. And then with this rig here, it will take a little longer. I'm gonna be going about 55 miles an hour with this rig. This is usually kind of what I do with my diesel truck as well with this trailer. Um, we are limited definitely with those tires back there. I believe at 70 or 75 uh, because of the speed rating of the tires. So we can't go faster than that regardless. We don't want to blow those tires out. So we'll be going about 55 so we can conserve some energy because we're close to using one kilowatt <laughs> per mile. We were roughly uh, 850 to 900 watt hours um, per mile on our little test drive while I was going 70. Um, but we also had lower speeds in there. So that brought it down a little bit. So we can't go too fast. And there are no chargers between here and Butte, at least no DC fast chargers. There is uh, a place in Anaconda and a place in Deer Lodge, or the other way around, I think Deer Lodge is first, Anaconda is second, uh, with level two chargers. So possibly the one level two charger in Deer Lodge we may have to stop at and uh, top off there just to make it to Butte. It is 150 miles and it is 2000 feet elevation gain. So that's a killer. Uh, you know, going back wouldn't be much of an issue. So now that's it, it's 150 miles from here. We're about 25 or 30 miles from Missoula. And uh, just before Missoula at the Y, there is a supercharger that we could pull in and wouldn't have to unhook and could top off. So I have to stop there anyway, because I'm picking up my father-in-law with his dog. He's gonna join me on this trip. And uh, well, so I see if I can pull in there and plug in and maybe top off, I don't know, maybe for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and get a little more. And then we only have about 120, 125 miles to go. So that should ease our pain a little bit. And uh, well, hopefully it's not too adventurous. Hopefully we can make it to Rocker without any issues. I also have the Cybertruck mobile connector with me, but it only charges at 32 amps. Uh, of a NEMA 1450. We could find NEMA 1450s uh, at campgrounds. There's a couple campgrounds on the way um, and it's before the season since it's a uh, late April season really doesn't start till Memorial Day. So the end of May. So we should be able to get in and get a spot just for charging. Don't know what they would charge us, <laughs> but they want some money for sure. But I also brought a uh, aftermarket charger with me that can actually charge up to 48 amps. And uh, so I would be willing to overload a NEMA 1450 for half an hour or so, see how warm it gets, whatever, kind of keep monitoring it, but uh, that will cut down on our charging time. Or I could at least set it to 40 amps and be totally safe and keep going. So I could be faster than what the Tesla mobile connector can do here. So, all right, well, <laughs> It's uh, about time to go. Let's check the stats real quick before I unplug and then we'll unplug and get going. We are at 99%. It says 20 minutes remaining. It's down to seven kilowatts, only 30 or 48 amps. So you could go 48 amps here, but it's only going at 30. Uh, we got the trailer thingy there, right? Um, <clears throat> we got our trailer gain set, our boost set. So we're all good to go there. 
I don't know why it's heating here. It's plenty warm out. Let's turn that off. There we go. So now we need to go into the trips and uh, reset a, a trip meter right there. So let's pull this up trips and then here. So this was our trip test trip right here. 46 miles about 839 watt hours per mile there. So we're going to reset this one. Bang. So this will be our trip today. And uh, we'll see. So we, we were about 840. So let's see where we get um, the total distance here. You can see we're at about 499 there. So about 500 watt hours per mile. That is the regular driving, some uh, faster driving as well as the trailer in there. Um, so it would be nice if we could be down there with the trailer behind us, but we're probably not going to be. So now let's go to the navigation and see what it has to say. The navigation already tells us to stop at the Missoula Supercharger for 25 minutes. Whew, that doesn't make me feel much better. <laughs> so we're already in there. So saying let's go to the Supercharger, put 20 minutes. Uh, of time in there and then go from there so it doesn't look like we'll be able to make it to um, Butte straight away we'll have to get around it uh, with uh, the supercharger here in Missoula um, we are at 99% it still says 20 minutes remaining so well yeah <laughs> um, also it says supercharger Missoula that's not the one we would go to so it puts us down here, but out here is the Y. That's where we will go to up uh, at the Y. There is a supercharger as well, which is much easier accessible. I can pull up sideways and plug in while down here in uh, Missoula, there's only six of them and they're set back and it's really without blocking a whole bunch of chargers. It's impossible unless we unhook and I don't want to unhook. So. And we got to stop at the Y anyway to pick up my father-in-law. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll see if we can get about 20 minutes in there. And uh, woof. And then hopefully make it to Butte. <laughs> so I'm not sure how accurate uh, the navigation is with the trailer. I mean, uh, the truck really don't know anything. The trailer weight could have changed since the last towing. It could be a different trailer, I guess. Um, yeah, it doesn't really know anything about the trailer. <laughs> so we'll see. The The big question will be, so right now it says we arrive with 82% in Missoula. We may have a little more because we stop at the Y. That's about seven miles less or so. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll play it by ear and hopefully we do not get stuck anywhere because we don't want this to be a big adventure. We really just want to get there. Um, I got some work to do at the cabin. I need to replace a breaker box. So, and I, I gotta be back Friday night. So, <laughs> well, let's get the adventure started. day out and we're coming closer to the interstate here we are at 95% and uh, so it now tells us uh, after charging at the supercharger in Missoula we're going to Butte and we should arrive in Butte with 13% 
If we can arrive in Butte with 13%, then I'm impressed. Um, that would be like super duper cool. Um, that's plenty to spare, 13%. So if that is really the case, hmm, impressive. I'm not sure how uh, far up it wants to charge in Missoula. It says 25 minutes and uh, now it just dropped to 80% arrival in Missoula. It keeps dropping. So I'm wondering, <laughs> well, we'll see, I guess, once we're in Missoula and charge, we'll see when it wants to let us go um, at what percentage we are and we'll go from there. Arrived at the supercharger at the Y with uh, 82%. It's 67 degrees out and um, well we're about seven miles short of the supercharger that it said we should go to and the other thing is um, it actually it rerouted us in a weird way it tells us to go to Butte then to Lima and then to Island Park which is kind of odd so we'll see um, now let's see here we are going at 63 kilowatts there, so not too bad. That's about what we get here, not much more. We are at 83%, so that's not bad at all. I'm not sure how far it, uh, how far up it wants to charge, so we can keep going. The navigation is still stuck here on the supercharger in Missoula. It hasn't switched yet for some reason, that's interesting. So maybe we just end the trip and restart the trip. Okay, let's see what it does here. So now it knows we're in Missoula. It calls that Highway 93 North. And it says 45 minutes here, holy moly, before we continue the trip. Wow. Well, um, gotta load up uh, father-in-law and this dog and maybe take a party break, but two, what, uh, 40 minutes is a, uh, quite a bit so right now it will get us in at minus five percent so if we get up to 90 we should come in at zero percent <laughs> well it'll be tricky but we'll see what we can do right I mean we can always still go slower I was going 60 now maybe 55 will do better we can go 50 we can go 45 if we have to we just have to make it to Butte it still does route us from Butte to Lima and then to Island Park. So I would think it would go from Butte to Bozeman maybe and then Island Park. But for some reason it likes Lima. I don't know why. So, but we got a little time here. We'll see what we do. Get loaded up. Oh, now it switched to 35 minutes. So it's 150. So yeah, about 225, 230. We should be out of here. All right, we got loaded up. Got a dog back here in the cage and well the father-in-law is right here. <laughs> we'll load them up before we go. So, oh man, it's just uh, there. That's our trip, not that you can see much. We are at 99% there. It says calculating and uh, 13 kilowatts. Uh, we added 22 kilowatt hours here. So um, we're almost at full and currently it says uh, we will get to Butte with 10% by 4.03. And from Butte, it still routes us through Lima to get to the cozy cabin. So we'll see, I'll play with that once we get to Butte and maybe see, because I'd like to go through Bozeman. I think that would be the better way to go. So we'll be unplugging here in a couple minutes, 217, 68 degrees. And we're basically at 100% here. It shows 99 and time is calculating. So that means we're up there. Current drive, 22 miles to get here. Use 30 minutes to do this, but we averaged 1,031 watt hours per mile. So over a kilowatt. So per mile, that is uh, not as great as we want it to be. So we used uh, 23 kilowatt hours. So yeah, just a little bit over the 22 miles makes about a kilowatt makes 23 kilowatt hours makes sense. So right now we have a basically full battery. It still shows 99%. Full battery is 123. Um, so that should get us just right there. It does say we will arrive with 10%. Uh, it is 123 miles, but it says 10%. So we'll see once we get there. So 
So I just pulled out here at the way station to get the weight of the truck and trailer. That was kind of interesting. We are about halfway. It is 71 degrees, 3.22 p.m. We are at 59% and it estimates an arrival of 7% here at this point. It's been going up and down. It was as high as 17 in the beginning and then dropped down as low as five and came back up to uh, the seven. And so currently on this trip, since we charged, we are at 901 watt hours per mile. And for the total trip, we're at 938 watt hours per mile. So we're doing pretty good. or actually rocker with 2% plenty to spare it is 434 still 67 degrees out and we did on our current drive 940 watt hours per mile so just under one kilowatt hour per mile that's not too bad it is 123 miles so we did good and uh, since we charged that's obviously the same and now we need to go look into the trip section here uh, so our trip a total trip is 954 and lifetime is 538 so that came up quite a bit now with this long section of towing here but so the trip is 954 and since Missoula we were at 940 so we did actually pretty good we're under 1000 watt hours uh, per mile so that is pretty darn good so now um, well it tells us we should go to Lima which is a ways away here uh, going south which would get us there minus 73 percent so we need to put at least 73 percent in to get there and the some to spare so we need at least 83 percent and currently it says an hour um, to uh, charge so we'll see here um, let's go plug in. We should do pretty good. Down at 2%. There was no battery preconditioning showing. It should be plenty warm from uh, this trip towing the trailer. So there we go, 244. Oh, come on, we could squeeze a little bit more. 246. Ah, uh, well, I guess at least we're pretty close to the 250. Well, now it's time for a bathroom break. All right, we're back at 37% now. We're still going at 175 here, so it dropped quite a bit already. Um, and you can see it keeps dropping here. So we'll see. Um, it estimated an hour. Now it says 50 minutes. It is uh, 4.48 now and uh, well I didn't get to go to the bathroom yet <laughs> as soon as you pull up with the cyber truck people run out and come ask you questions so now I have to go up to 91% already two minutes to continue trip um, we're going at 61 kilowatts now not very fast so um, <clears throat> well I changed the plan so the truck wanted us to go down to Lima and then basically cross the mountains I'm not familiar with that route it's probably a two-lane highway looks very curvy um, I don't want to do that because that's off the beaten path and uh, it is now 5 30 p.m. so 5 30 in the afternoon it's gonna get dark here in a few hours not my preference so 
I switched it up. I want to go from here to Bozeman or actually in Belgrade there is a new supercharger that's a 250 kilowatt that's larger um, and where I can easily pull in with the trailer and don't have to disconnect I'm pretty sure there's a, there's like 12 of them there or something um, so going to Belgrade it's only about 80 miles from here and then from Belgrade to West Yellowstone it's another about 80 or 90 miles which is easily to make and that's highway 191 so that's easy to do and in West Yellowstone there's the supercharger that we can pull up probably with the trailer it depends a little bit on how busy uh, that parking lot there is but shouldn't be a problem but we may not even have to stop there because it's only about 20 more miles to the cabin from there and we can charge at the cabin so that is the plan to go from here to Belgrade <clears throat> charge there and then go West Yellowstone or maybe directly to the cozy cabin um, we'll see we're pretty high right now at uh, we're right now 92% it just told me right here you have enough charge to continue so um, yeah we're doing Belgrade add on as much as we need uh, to make West Yellowstone maybe a little bit more I will have to see how fast it is charging right now we're dropping we're 53 kilowatts now so no sense in sticking around here and getting any more regardless of where we're going we gotta get going but we didn't wait for the truck we actually went in we got subway walked the dog and now the dog's back out and uh, so we still have to load up the dog and then uh, after that we'll get going Ninety-six percent. We're almost full, so we're going to Belgrade. It says we should have eight stalls available on arrival, so plenty of room for us to get there. So, let's go. Now we're going up Homestake Pass and you can see here watt hours per mile went up quite a bit. We were basically under 1000 watt hours per mile and it's been going up and up uh, as we are climbing up Homestake Pass. As we are approaching the top it kind of levels out and flattens out and we're slowly dropping again a little bit and here shortly we are going downhill. Now we are on the downhill side and you can see the max speed is set to 54 miles per hour. And look at this, wow, we're dropping and dropping on the watt hours per mile there. And the truck and trailer are going a steady 54 without me using the brakes at all. It's just regeneration and it's going downhill pretty steep and we actually seen there this was on one of those emergency ramps for the big rigs in case they have a brake failure. And you can see there the green on the left hand side of the truck's screen that's the regen so it is about 40% regen maybe and it wasn't an issue there was nothing overheating or anything uh, it would just go down this uh, hill uh, several miles um, on regen and obviously slowly we would decrease the watt hour per mile consumption there and 
not a problem to hold the 54 miles per hour on that reach end setting there. Worked great. Now we're slowly coming down into the flats and we can speed up a little bit and now we drop down to 700 watt hours per mile and even going under 700 still going downhill still having slight reach in there Six seventy-four watt hours per mile. We're dropping still slightly, and then we came down into the flat area and had to accelerate again. in Belgrade look at this we averaged 743 watt hours per mile we only had 77 miles to go but we did great so got here with 47% left it is 702 now it's still 71 degrees so why are we doing what 200 watt hours per mile better pretty simple we are going flat out now from Missoula to Butte it's 2,000 feet elevation gain or even a little bit more maybe and that is just hard on every vehicle not just electric vehicles but with an electric vehicle you see that real easy because you have relatively little fuel with you so going back from Butte to Missoula will do much better but now that we actually uh, are up at elevation it's pretty much going flat out we'll have some more elevation gain uh, towards West Yellowstone and Island Park because we're gonna go up to about 6,500 roughly so maybe we have another about 1,000 feet elevation gain and uh, so now at this point uh, I almost think in uh, Butte we could have charged to 100% and driven the usual route that we usually drive and made it to Island Park um, the navigation said at some point we would have to stay below 55 to do that but we're only going 60 anyway so we probably could have made it but that's okay we're here we're playing it relatively safe because I don't want to get stuck with this rig here and uh, it is now yeah 7 uh, in the evening um, it's gonna get dark here so we don't want to take any chances we need to get to the cabin so we can uh, so I can replace the breaker box there but we're doing great um, yeah 743 watt hours per mile that brings our average for the trip um, down to 881 so the average for the trip starts going down since we're doing so good so now here we'll plug in and uh, we'll charge a little bit actually let's see if we go to the cozy cabin let's see what it says okay it says minus 32 it says 45 minutes charge here um that is all the way to island park which means uh we could stop in west yellowstone at the supercharger before we go another about 20 ish miles which uh, is also climbing over a pass so um yeah we'll see it, it says minus 32 for uh cozy cabin so we only need to add 32 percent and the problem is because we're already at 47 
plus that uh, 32, that is basically 80%. So we're coming up there where it throttles us a lot already. So um, that's why maybe we just get enough to make West Yellowstone, then we're a little bit faster. We don't have to wait as long here. But then, uh, I don't know, gotta go bathroom again. Uh, wanna get some snack, something, get coffee, walk the dog and grandpa needs to smoke so <laughs> so the 45 minutes may go by faster than we know i mean in butte we were slower than the truck basically uh we didn't have to wait we didn't rush anything or whatever uh, we had a comfortable stop uh eight hour sandwich there at subway and uh, overall it worked just fine it, it was actually just perfect so well i better get plugged in here so we can get charging All right, 45 minutes to continue trip. That's what it told us before. Let's see how far up we go here. Um, it did a preconditioned battery for charging. Only 167, ha, huh. not very much. And it's throttling already, darn. Okay, well, I guess we'll take whatever we can get. Enough charge to continue trip. And uh, while well, we're already at 99%, it's only going at 28 kilowatts right now. And uh, got the cozy cabin here. Should get there with 18%. Um, it's gonna be a little trip here. We're uh, going down this way here, the highlighted route. Um, maybe, maybe we stop there, but probably not. We got plenty now. Um, time flew by people want to see the truck talking to people walking the dog and everything so no real wait time and uh, we could have left here probably uh, 20 minutes ago or so the truck was ready and we could have stopped in West for another few minutes because we're charging this slow here 27 that is way too slow basically in order to be fast you want to leave early um, not wait till it drops this low but heck that's how it goes but so far it's been fun so let's go in West Yellowstone. It was around 2% arrival for Island Park for a long time and then it said we should go charge here. And uh, so on the current drive here we are 983 watt hours per mile. Um, we had to gain some elevation again. It was over um, over 1000 for a while. So, but the whole trip is average 912. So we done good at times, obviously, because the entire trip is only 912. But yes, we've been over, uh, it was way over a thousand again for a while climbing up here. And I didn't want to take the risk. So right now it says minus one, if we would do the last uh, 29 miles from here to the cozy cabin. Um, so yeah, it's, 10.03 and it's 49 degrees. Don't want to take the risk this late at night. We'll stop here for five or 10 minutes real quick. Get enough uh, to safely make it to the cabin. 10 minutes remaining to continue trip. It says we can go a little less than that. I think uh, the 10 minutes would bring us in at 10% uh, in Island Park. 
we don't really need that but uh, well we'll see 10 minutes go by fast so this is only a 150 uh, so it's a version 2 supercharger there was no preconditioning the battery was plenty warm uh, because of the elevation gain uh, it was a little workout <laughs> but yeah we're only getting 140 here so we're not even really maxing out this charger um, at 17% I would have expected this to max out but the Cybertruck is not quite there yet I guess there is supposedly a uh, software update coming that will improve this charging here I mean at this point I would expect this to go to 150 I seen the model 3 draw 154 155 so um, seems a little slow but still it will be about 10 minutes and then we'll be able to safely make it to the cozy cabin the 10 minutes were up pretty quick we're done unplugged we got 32 percent already 10 14 50 degrees out and uh, we're going on our last stretch here it says uh, 35 minutes 29 miles we should get there with 13 percent that is way more than we really need but at this point we'd rather be safe than sorry cabin it says its battery is low well I guess we are at 12% so it's about 1054 41 degrees 12 percent means we're one percent uh, less than uh, what it estimated at it says here plan your next charge well it doesn't know we have a charger here I guess um, this truck has never been here so it never charged here so it doesn't know that there is a charger here but after we plug in here next time around it knows so Tesla's always save every charger they were at every point they were at every location so it will remember those so we did pretty good on this uh, drive since Yellowstone here it was only 29 miles 784 watt hours per mile so that's not too bad uh, we had to climb over the pass came back down and hit some rain after that actually even going up the pass we had a little bit of rain there so we didn't quite make it to Idaho without rain total trip here we are at 901 watt hours per mile for 349 miles total using 314 kilowatt hours so 901 watt hours per mile is not too terrible I think um, with this trailer and the weight we have so but now we need to get the last of the snow um, away in front of the door so we can get in here and uh, well I guess I'll sum this trip up in the morning I gotta go over here over there in this tree that is our power tree here in Idaho 
and so there are the two chargers we got a tesla charger there and a uh a charger a watt saving us 10 with a j1772 uh this watt saving us 10 is a really cool charger uh because it uh is set up for rfid cards and i have one with me and one is here at the cabin so any guest can actually activate that charger with the rfid card so uh yeah this is a really cool charger that what saving us 10 um there's a link down below in the description if you're looking for a good charger you don't have to use the rfid card feature it works just whoa it got dark here all of a sudden it works just as any plug and charge but you can enable the RFID function and then you can put it out in a public place like this, but nobody can charge except for people that do have uh, the card. So that works great here for our cabin because our guests, they obviously get in the cabin. Inside on the keyboard there is the RFID card so they can just grab it and charge. Link down below in the description if you're interested. This actually helps out the channel a little bit. You, uh, we get a little kickback there, a few dollars, if you order one of those with our link. Well, for now, we'll need to plug in, go to bed, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Good morning. It was a long day yesterday, but now we're in Idaho. And guess what? It's raining. It's pouring down this morning. So I got to stand in the trees here to have a little shelter. Uh, got here last night and uh, everything basically went fine. So we got our two chargers here. This is the Tesla, a Gen 2 charger, and we have the Cybertruck plugged into this. And this here is the Watt Saving US 10 uh, with a J1772. And this is the one that you can use an RFID card on. And uh, this is a really cool charger. So if you need a home charger or a business charger, whatever, you can use this with or without these RFID cards. So go down below in the description, there's a link and uh, get yourself a Watt Saving US 10 if you need a good quality charger. And this one comes with a pigtail. Um, I believe there's a NEMA 650 and the NEMA 1450 that you can order it with. Uh, but I hardwired mine. As you can see, I got this going right up into it. So you can actually take that pigtail off. I do have a video that shows how to do that. Um, go check that video out. Like I said, if you need a good charger, this is one uh, definitely good. Only has a light on it, no display, so it can be anywhere. Um, yeah, great charger. Well, anyway, here's the truck <laughs> and uh, the trailer. And we are still plugged in, but we got charged overnight. So, um, but it's just pouring down this morning. It definitely took us longer to get here than uh, if we would have driven the diesel truck. Um, with the diesel truck, we would have been faster because yeah, the, we would have had one fueling stop, uh, which could have been as short as 15 minutes. But if we would have done that fueling stop, we would not have uh, had a nice sit down uh, lunch or dinner, whatever you want to call it. Like it was more dinner, <laughs> it was more an evening almost. So we wouldn't have had that. We would have probably just picked up some really cheap sandwiches from the gas station instead of going to Subway. Um, maybe we would even have eaten while driving. And by the time we would have gotten here, we we're usually pretty tired and worn out with the uh, diesel truck, our diesel truck's old, so it's definitely work to uh, pull this trailer with our old diesel truck. I mean, the steering is a little worn out, this and that, it's noisy. This was so nice and quiet. This was unbelievable. Going at 60 miles an hour, this is like totally quiet. I would say this is silent. I uh, Several times throughout the trip, I was like extremely happy, surprised that, that it's so quiet. That was so nice. We could easily talk. We didn't have to yell like in the truck. So that was super, super nice. It towed amazing. Um, I really didn't feel the trailer back there. I have to tell you, this truck is very dangerous. <laughs> it is very addictive. <laughs> You don't feel the trailer back there. You're just driving along and you're speeding up. I mean, as I got on the interstate back there in uh, Belgrade after charging, I was at 70 and didn't even notice it. And it's like, oh, I got to slow down, right? Yeah, it's amazing. It holds so great. You don't feel the trailer back there. You forget the trailer is there. And so <laughs> you got to pay attention. Um, yeah, extremely nice. But uh, the trip was good. 
Um, we never felt we had to wait for charging, but also people come up and ask you talk a lot and, uh, it's kind of fun to meet people and stuff. So, and this definitely was not a trip where we were rushing through. This was a trip to see what we can do, what we can't do. And as expected from Missoula to Butte, this is just the toughest stretch there is, um, with not just EVs, with any car, the, the fuel consumption is much higher. And then coming from, uh, Bozeman up to west we had a little more elevation gain so we used a little bit more and then basically from west coming over here uh, we used very little again so kind of consumption is kind of as expected in regards to where it's high and where it's low but it's been really nice to see consumption in the 750 to 800 watt hours per mile with the trailer so that was really nice um, that was actually a little bit lower than expected i was thinking we would be right around 1000 one kilowatt hour per mile but we were lower so well it's been a great trip now i gotta get to work i have to put uh replace a breaker box in here there's an old breaker box in here that desperately needs replaced because it has breakers in there that apparently are responsible for about 2800 house fires every year so we definitely want a new breaker box here that's the job for uh today and then tomorrow we'll do a trip back and I'll probably make this a separate video so you can see on the way back. Um, our consumption will be a little different, especially from Butte to Missoula. The consumption should be much lower going back than it was coming here. So in any event, um, thank you for watching. Goodbye.